very uh, on vogue subject nowadays. Okay, we're ready? So welcome. I would like to introduce my two speakers here today. Guillaume Prinson, he's head of France and South of Europe for Stripe, a company that helps businesses of all sizes accept card payments and other payment methods through web and mobile apps. And Luis, Luis Paris, your co-founder and CEO of Parklick, right? The European Online Parking Network. We're expecting to have a third speaker, Oscar Pierre, but unfortunately he hasn't been able to come. Today he was in Barcelona and he hasn't been able to travel. So please welcome our two speakers who are going to talk about cracking the code on internationalization. Thank you. Hi everyone, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for being here. Um, I am personally very glad to be back here uh, at South Summit. Um, this is a very special place for us at Stripe because uh, we, uh, for those who weren't here last year, Stripe launched in Spain exactly a year ago, day for day, here at South Summit. Uh, and so this is, again, this is a very special place for, for me and for us at Stripe. Um, for those who don't know Stripe, just a word, uh, what we do at Stripe is we are a technology platform that uh, enables entrepreneurs uh, or business owners to start a business online, to monetize their business, um, to manage their business, and to go international and to expand their business internationally. Uh, for the, the entrepreneurs be amongst yourselves, you might already have heard of Stripe. For the other people, you might not, you actually might have already paid with Stripe because uh, over the past 12 months, millions of Spaniards have actually used Stripe without necessarily knowing it because you've paid on the internet uh, through Stripe. Um, internationalization is, is, is an increasing important, increasingly important topic, uh, especially in, in, in Spain. And so when South Summit came to us asking if we wanted to talk about how to crack that code, uh, I thought that was an amazing idea. And I thought, what better than actually having uh, a successful startup uh, Stripe user, Parklake, uh, come to talk about it. Um, they're in a much better position to talk about it than what I would say. But, uh, and so I'm very happy to have Luis here join. Thank you very much, Luis, for, for being, uh, being with us today. Um, again, people hear Luis. Hello? Closer? Try closer. Hello, hello. Oh, oh yeah. OK. So, Luis, maybe you want to just start with 30 seconds a minute about like what, what do you guys do at Parklick? Um, what's your what's your mission? Absolutely, Parklick. It's a platform, an online platform that it's devoted to online parking reservations. As you can imagine, parking it's a very traditional business, and it's actually one of the fewest industries that it's not yet being digitalized. So, what we do at our company is working out on digitalizing this industry and we do it by reaching agreements with car park operators all around Europe and become their online sales channel. So um, if you need to reserve your parking space in an off-street car park for a few hours or a, for a couple of days, uh, we are the solution for that. That's fascinating. Um, you and I were talking about what's important when you're starting your company and you're scaling internationally, and the one word that came to your mouth the most was focus. So, like, focus on the right things, focus on spending your time on the most important high level, high, high leverage things. Um, how, does that, how does that apply to how you choose tools that you want to work with, tools such as Stripe but others? How do you think about the tools aspect of focus? Um, you know, build or buy, what do you build internally, what do you buy externally, how do you think about that, and who are the decision makers there? Uh, from our perspective, the, the focus part is fundamental to really work on what you do well. And what we do well is, a, is selling uh, parking passes. What we don't do well, and we have no idea, is about online payments, for example. So that's, that's a way that we chose Stripe, uh, just because we want to forget about that, just to make sure that uh, all that platform goes well and we really focus on the, uh, on the selling part. When you go international, uh, you got all sorts of additional complexity, right? Um, with regard to many things, partnerships, etc. but also monetizing, right? Like payments, you know, multi-currency, like different payment methods, 
you know, you're, you're in four or five markets today in Europe. Uh, yeah. You can maybe tell us more about Yeah, we're right market. now in uh, Spain, France, Italy, Portugal, and we're just opening uh, the Netherlands and also Germany. And for us, one of the fundamental parts uh, to address those markets is to, as you can imagine, uh, fulfill the customer needs. And for us, it was quite a surprise because uh, about, for example, the, in the Netherlands, people pay with uh, Ideal, which is their payment method. And we, I mean, honestly, I even didn't know that Ideal existed. But it happens that most of the people in the Netherlands use it, and that's their normal payment method. And actually, that was fundamental part of our decision uh, to make sure that we adapt our strategies uh, to what the market needs. The same thing happens, for example, with the multi-currency. I mean, we are starting with a couple of car parks in Switzerland, and of course, I mean, they are paying with Swiss francs, and we really need to uh, make sure that our solution uh, fits our customer needs and our partner needs. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, so you haven't been always with Stripe. Uh, what happened? Like, what were you using kind of before? What made you kind of think about, think differently about payments and scaling internationally on that side? What, what happened there? Well, there are several things that happened there. I mean, mm, the first one, uh, actually it's kind of curious because my CTO, uh, the technical guy, he's actually the one that, uh, it was a, your, your best champion in my organization because he just loves the product and it works really well. And as I was saying before, we are a marketing company. I mean, our role is to put a customer in front of the parking garage. And we just want to forget about everything else. Not forget, but you know, having it as smooth as possible. Uh, so with uh, our CTO sponsoring that solution, we just found a way that it really speeds up. Now that we were talking about scaling up, that really speeds up uh, the internationalization process. For example, something as simple as uh, charging uh, in a different uh, currency. Uh, I mean, if we go in the traditional way, uh, we had to set up uh, an entity, set up a bank account, etc. And we really just don't have time for that because maybe it just the market doesn't work, and we just shut down the market. So that's a way to just go faster. Yeah, cool. You just talked about you know your job is to kind of get the customer in front of the parking, get into the parking slot. Uh, how important in your business is um, customer experience in the app, you know, uh, seamlessness of the customer experience in the app, how quickly can he actually book a parking space? How important is that, you know, UX in your product uh, versus company? Yeah, the UX and UI is actually fundamental. It's a critical part of us, as I was saying. We're a marketing company, we're focused on uh, transactions, so mm -hmm. we really need to generate a lot of volume. So, uh, I mean, my co-founder has a saying that I love it, it's like, get more juice from the same orange. So what I'm saying is, if we get the right user experience and the user interface for that funnel of traffic that we're receiving, we will simply increase conversion. It will not cost additionally to acquire new customers, but they will convert more. So having the right UX at our side and having the right, you know, things are not getting broken and uh, you are getting what you're expecting and fulfilling the promise that we do commercially. It's a fundamental part uh, of what we are. Great. Um, you guys, I mean, uh, we talked about roadmap. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna kind of talk about your roadmap, but you guys have a very are very ambitious. You guys have lots of ambition across Europe. Um, but it's a, at the same time, it's a very competitive market uh, and a very local market too. Uh, tell us more about how you think about you know your business expanding in the rest of Europe, maybe the world, you know external growth acquisitions versus organic growth. Uh, tell us more about how you think about that. Yeah, I mean uh, our industry in, in, in the parking industry, as I was saying initially, it's not uh, yet digitalized, and it is happening. And as it is happening, there are many players that are jumping into the scene and starting their companies and starting uh, their own uh, markets. So what we've seen in the last five years is that uh, the competitive landscape has changed dramatically, dramatically, and there are many small companies all around, many competitors all around doing the same. So part of our uh, strategy, is, which is at this stage or in the, in the shorter term, uh, to increase our coverage in Europe, part of our uh, strategy is to 
have, mm, let, let's put it this way, we have two legs in our strategy. One which is the uh, organic development, which is sending our my sales team to the different countries. For example, when we opened Italy, we had a very good Spanish player, and with that Spanish player, he gave us car parts in Italy. We went there with our sales team, we started operations, and then uh, the sales team based in Madrid were traveling continuously and closing more, uh, more deals. So th that was like one way of opening the markets, which is a, the, just a traditional way, the organic way. One thing that really differentiates us from our competitors is that in the long term, we believe that all these 14, 15 uh, competitors that are in the European uh, scene will be consolidated. And for us, that's the name of the game, consolidation. And of course, we want to be the consolidators and want to make the acquisitions. So the second leg of our growth strategy and of our international growth strategy, it's also about acquiring companies. So as of today, we made a first acquisition in Paris, which was a very successful case because we bought the number one player there. And also we made a second acquisition in Barcelona, which was to enhance our uh, products. So that's the way that we mm, have the dual strategy or dual growth uh, strategy. Yeah, I think that, like, that, that reflects pretty well like the new way of scaling of these companies, which is uh, you, you now have the tools uh, to be able to scale from one place. You guys are essentially scaling from Madrid across Europe in four different countries today and like flying out teams whenever necessary. But today, entrepreneurs have the tools to actually be able to do that and to support that kind of scale. Uh, I find that pretty interesting. No, and those tools are fundamental well. because yeah. that are actually, I mean, having the ability of forgetting some things and making, knowing that they're really working, like, I mean, I have no problem with that. The Stripe payment worked fantastically well for us. And making sure that I forget about that allows me to really focus on what I need, which is this growth. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, just to kind of summarize, we've got just a couple of minutes left, to try to summarize a few thoughts. Uh, you talked about focus. Uh, you talked about tools that scale. If you want to scale quickly internationally, in particular, you want to use tools that scale. Uh, you talked about the importance of the CTO and decision making. Given how, how much leverage tools are now bringing to a business, the CTO is more and more a decision maker on those aspects and on scaling aspects. Uh, you talked about UX as being a very important differentiator um, for these companies as they go more and more mobile. Um, and you talked about ambition. You want to be the consolidator, <laughs> not the consolidated uh, and, and I think that's, I think that's, uh, I mean that's that's extremely positive. And I think we're seeing more and more, uh, you know, uh, coming back to the panel that was just before, more and more Spanish companies, actually Spanish startups, going going for the com consolidator versus the com consolidated. And I think that's an amazing sign. Just one comment that you were saying before about the CDO role. Uh, from our perspective, it, it, I mean, it, it's incredible how things have changed. And, uh, and particularly when we're in an, in an endeavor like ours of digitalizing a full industry, uh, that, I mean, in the past, you had these uh, marketing guys that they were leading in marketing and sales were saying absolutely everything. But uh, now the CTO is a key role that it's really changing things because, uh, I mean, you just asked me about the UX and the UI. And actually, that's under his uh, umbrella or her umbrella. and. I believe that having the right emphasis in this uh, technical slash product part will really allow companies like us using this type of tools to really grow mm, whatever we want from one place. And Spain has huge talent in that space as well from, from what I can tell. Maybe just a closing thought, um, you know, we talked a lot about international today. We're lucky enough to have Luis and thank you very much again. Um, but this is, a, this is a common thread that we're seeing in Spain, in, in the Spanish startup ecosystem. Uh, we, looked at, we looked at a few numbers internally, and nine out of 10 startups that are on Stripe in Spain uh, have international clients, sell internationally. 90% of Spanish startups sell outside of Spain. And, and that's a radical evolution you know, since five years ago. Uh, you know, Spain is now seeing its market as being Europe and the world much more than only the domestic Spanish market.
Uh, and so I'd love to leave you with those thoughts. I think that's an amazing sign uh, and very, very happy to be here. Thanks a lot, Luis, again. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Thanks.